recording. Okay. I'm also outdoors, so it's uh, if you hear background noise, let me know. It's just the quietest place in, in the, that that little bungalow we're in. It's very noisy. Okay, perfect. You get some. Get some nice. uh, yes, it finally got a little cooler, and uh, it was really hot. Uh, we arrived, and it was uh, hotter than Florida. So like, why? Why did we come oh, here? Wow. <laughs> anyway, so live from the Catskills. Um, the Borscht Belt. At least I get to see what it looks like. I've never been there. I missed it. I used to spend every summer here. Yeah. Miss it. Miss it. Yep. My children were uh, very small. It's, it's, it's really nice. It's, it's not the Swiss Alps, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice. It's, uh, they, are, they stay there about 300,000 observant Jews in the area. In the whole wow. Catskills in the summer, they say that the Walmart here is the busiest Walmart in the country during the summer. Because <laughs> we buy we buy in bulk, but um, it's just a beautiful place to be together with the family. So, but I'm glad I'm, I'm happy to plug in and uh, and uh, continue our teaching. Yeah, it's good to see green trees. Okay, <laughs> and you can sit outside. Um, we are we are in the if, you, if uh, we are holding if we said that the, that the Tanya is 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 a yechidus the yechidus it means a a private meeting a private audience with the Alter Rebbe um, one of the um, most important aspects of a relationship of a Jew with its its mentor. Or in the Hasidic terms of a Hasid and its Rebbe, is to have a constant um, relationship for personal development, for development to get closer to Hashem, inner inner transformation, inner uh, refinement, um, and the mentor and the Rebbe is here to guide its uh, its students, its followers, its Hasidim. Um, having 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 this this personal meeting um, with a rebbe, um, so the Alter Rebbe who lived 300 years ago had many uh, many many Hasidim, and at one point it was getting too many uh, too many to demand was larger than what he was able to physically um, meet with everyone. So he kind of uh, that was the catalyst for him to write the Book of Tanya to give a um, kind of a back and forth. Where the uh, where the student comes in with with uh, with with the questions of a path to personal development, and Dr. Rebbe will will respond, expecting um, the student to to dwell on the information, to internalize the information, and with that return and report back and come up with a new set of questions will he will address. And that's kind of the 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 layout of the book of Tanya where it's a a chapter by chapter where the Alter Rebbe comes in and consults us um, in our in our in, in, in with every chapter another another level gets reached. So um, we are and just to give you an, an overview and in, in where we're holding in Tanya we we reached chapter 41. There's 53 chapters. We reach chapter 41, and chapter 41 to 50 is kind of like one big meeting, one big yechidus, um, centered around of the theme of of methods of of love and awe of God. And the last the four chapters, uh, 51, 52, 50, last three chapters, discuss another subject, which um, kind of closes up the Tanya, which also goes into the uh, which 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 will will we'll cover the end as well. Um, the main idea in this lesson today is going to be about the importance of con contemplation of meditation um, as a means to nurture the emotion called love and awe of God. Um, we did speak in the last class the importance of a mitzvah. We we explained that a mitzvah is the most powerful way to connect to Hashem. It is fulfilling the will of God. We talked that will is the deepest and, and strongest um, essence, essential power in a human. 
and by reflection uh, as well within Hashem, for us to connect to Hashem's wisdom, for us to Hashem to, to us to connect to Hashem's emotions, so to speak, um, is is um, is through learning Torah. Um, however, for us to connect to the will of Hashem is through the vehicle of action, which is what we call a mitzvah. So a mitzvah is really the power connection. And we talked at the end, we mentioned the end, the, the power of tzedakah. Um, that tzedakah is the, is the quintessential mitzvah of, uh, that encompasses such a deep-rooted uh, idea of, of, of something very physical that connects to something so powerful and so spiritual. But in the end, we discussed that the idea that although a mitzvah, which is just the action, right, just doing what Hashem wants us to do, is, is the most important thing in our relationship, um, intent, doing a mitzvah with intention, with proper feelings of love and awe, adds energy and life to our action. Although it's not, um, it's not as important, initially we said the most important thing is the action. In other words, if I do a mitzvah without intention, without emotions, without passion, I still fulfilled the will of Hashem. You will use the example of if your spouse says to take out the garbage, right? You can take out the garbage. As long as you take out the garbage, that's what counts. It doesn't matter if you're excited about it, you're not excited about it. I mean, it'd be nice, but that's not the most important element. It's the action that has to get done versus if I say, I'll, I, I don't want to focus on the action, I just want to focus on the intent, on the meditation of the mitzvah. I want to have the feeling to the mitzvah, but I, I stop and I don't do the action. In other words, let me just meditate about the, the mitzvah of mezuzah. Let me meditate the, you know, about the lighting the Shabbat candles and I don't actually do the action, just have the meditation itself. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's meaningless because God desires the action. With that, of course, we should incorporate intent. We should do the mitzvah with a, with a passion, with a, with a emotion of, of, of a love and awe. That, that adds energy. We use the, the analogy of a bird, right? With that, the mitzvah is compared to a bird, and the intent is compared to the wings, right? You can have a bird without wings, still a bird, but the, the, the bird is going to fly. You could do the mitzvah, still the mitzvah, but the body, the mitzvah. You need to infuse the intent, the meditation, the kavana in the mitzvah. Those are the wings that are going to lift this mitzvah to great heights um, towards Hashem. So today in lesson 41, in time, chapter 41, we're going to begin what he is, um, the importance of applying contemplative meditation in our daily service of Hashem. That's really uh, the key. The whole course we did last year on meditation, we had a whole course meditation from the Sinai, is really based on the beginning of chapter 41. Um, so let's begin. We start from the beginning, chapter 41? Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I, I'm, I'm, I, if you have the PDF, today we're still gonna use the PDF with some, some, I some. I don't have, you didn't send it, but I'm looking at the book, that's okay. Okay, yeah, to look in the book. Look in the book. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna read aloud. I'm not gonna do that much text today. I'm gonna read aloud and we're gonna explain it. Okay. And we'll get back to the text. We'll we'll we'll, we'll go back to that. Um as I mentioned that the word kavana. Kavana in Hebrew means intent, right? You know, people have a hard time some uh, this, 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 um, defining what's intent. Because intent means to many people, some, uh, every person has different, different explanation to what's intent, right? Intent some, some, on a very basic level, for example, you can, have, you can do something with no intent or you can do something with the wrong intent. The difference is, for example, if I um, give tzedakah, I can give tzedakah with no intent. I make it a, a habit that, uh, that every month on my credit card, it goes off $180. That's like, okay, I'm not even thinking about it. 
done, right? Not like there is some type of meditation aspect while I do this mitzvah. That's that's kind of a mitzvah, maybe with with very little intent. I can also give tzedakah with the wrong intent. I can give tzedakah so I can have my my name, right, my big name on the building, so everybody can see what a big shot I am. So that's the uh, that's the wrong intent. That's a very basic uh, level. That's I, I, I'm, I that that we're not even discussing. That's that goes without saying that they should uh, never do a mitzvah with the wrong intent. However, by the way, um, the, the Mishnah says in Ethics Our Father, the question is there, should a person do a mitzvah, should a person do a mitzvah with the uh, wrong intent? Um, uh, the, the, the language is, um, shema. again, it could not necessarily mean the the wrong intent doesn't mean an evil intent. If it's an intent to do something bad, that we're not talking about. But sometimes a person feels there's no there's no feeling for a mitzvah. I don't have a feeling for for laying to fill in. I don't have a feeling for for praying. So rather me not do it. So the mission says you should still do it. You should still do the mitzvah. Why? Because the mission says in Hebrew, mitoch shalol lishma balishma. I'm doing the mitzvah without intent you will come to eventually do it with the right intent, right? So like the expression, fake it till you make it. That's the basic explanation to that kavana. The Rebbe famously explains that's not fake it till you make it, but much deeper that deep inside, even if you feel that you don't have the feeling for a mitzvah, in Hebrew, metoch can also mean the inside. The in inside of every Jew, is that there is a godly soul. And if I, ask, if I ask you, when you say, I'm not in the mood of doing the mitzvah, right? I don't want to go uh, visit somebody in the hospital. I'm not in the mood, right? Who's talking? Is it the animal soul or godly soul talking? The animal soul talking, right? Your godly soul is definitely in the mood. So the, uh, the Rebbe writes, do the mitzvah because your godly soul wants to do the mitzvah with the right intent. He's, he's definitely there. So that's, again, that's, that, that's already, that's a, I'm talking, this is very basic and I'm going to go deeper, obviously. Um, in, in, in chapter 41, he goes, that's Rebbe goes and, 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 and approaches what he said earlier, that the, that the, um, the wings, right, the intention of the mitzvah, typically the two wings, what are the two wings? He calls it Ava and Yira. Ava means love. Yira means fear. Ava is love Hashem. And Yira means fear of Hashem. Those are the two wings to every mitzvah. Uh, we can elaborate what that means. What does love of Hashem mean? What does fear of Hashem mean? I, I like to use the word not fear of Hashem, but awe of Hashem, as you're going to see soon. But till now, he said, the two those two uh, uh, um, meditations of emotions I'm trying to infuse the mitzvah is going to lift the mitzvah up. However, in chapter 41, he says, it's not just they're going to lift up the mitzvah. That's kind of step two when you do the mitzvah. But your approach, the very foundation. One second. Huh? It's a bit rough. Yeah. Um, um, the very foundation of every mitzvah observant, forget about the wings for a moment, the foundation of every mitzvah observant um, is Ava and Yira, is love and fear. Um, what I mean by that? We talked in Tanya that, about behavior, right? We talked about inner feelings and, and, and the, inner, the inner feelings, and then we talked about the garments. And Tanya, he explains that it's very difficult to change our inner, our inner feelings. It's a lot easier to control our behavior. Um, that's fine. No. I don't know. Check in my...
Apologies. All right. Um, so how so so the alt right in Tanya. So we mo- we got to focus on the behavior, right? Not so much on the inside, because to change the inside, you got to be a tzaddik. Tzaddik can change the inside. And Benini, you got you have a godly soul and you have a, a animal soul, and you're always going to have a struggle. And even if you don't have, and, and, and so don't so much focus on the inside, but focus on how to behave. However, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to change or at least uh, uh, refine your inside feelings. So he said, the Alter Rebbe says, there's two paths. And, and Tanya mentioned two paths. There's the long way and there's the short way. Or as he says, even more, a little bit more twisted, he calls it the long short way or the short long way. So what's the short way? The short way is that my, in my service to Hashem, I need to I need to focus on balancing my emotions, and uh, and 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 and, yeah. and and huh? I should think, huh? Um, um, I'm balancing the emotions and. And and focusing on on more on the action. And yes, because why why do I say balancing the emotions? Because there are we have inside of us a natural love and fear of Hashem. So if you just have to develop the 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 that 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 emotion within you, that can help you to live a balanced life where your behavior is in intact. And emotions, you know, they're balanced. You have struggles in and out. So you just long, as long as you try to control your emotions and and, and not act on on the improper impulses that, that pop up, then you should be good to serve Hashem in that way. But then we talked about the long way. The long way, and this is really the focus here, is going to is going to focus actually to we are going to not focus so much on only on behavior. We're actually going to now see, can I become a better person inside? Can I develop feelings? Can I develop emotions um, that are that are in line with Hashem's uh, Hashem's Hashem's uh, directives? Um, and that and that is and that and how do I how do we how do what is the key to inner to, to change your inner feelings? To transform your inner feelings or, or refine your inner feelings, the key is just as we said in Tanya in the beginning, that we have a mind and we have a heart, and which one is stronger, the mind or the heart? We said that the mind is more powerful than the heart, meaning that that a healthy person has to control its emotion through the mind. The mind, the 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 the, the what we said Chabad, Chachma Bina Das. The cognitive um, qualities have the ability to control our emotions. If I if I if I want to do something really really, and if I'm angry, uh, my mind can control my emotions. Say stop being so angry, control it, and and uh, and and don't don't act upon it. The same way the mind controls the emotion, the Tanya says here in chapter forty one, we need to utilize the power of the mind, which translates. To the word meditation, contemplative meditation, to actually develop a strong love and offer Hashem. So that's the that is the longer way because it takes work. It needs to be done consistently, literally on a daily basis. Those meditations, but that is going to be it. Be it be it says it's the it's the longer way, but it's the shorter. Meaning it it gets us to live life much more um, focused and much more secure because I'm actually working on my relationship. It's not just, I have to do something, I'll do it, I'll control myself, very nice. And I'm now now making Hashem happy and I'm happy and, and there's joy, fine. I'm going much deeper. I am I'm living in, in a life of intention, um, intuitive, intuitive thinking, intuitive transformation. And the Alter Rebbe says, this is really the key. And, and, and it's not something that is for the Tzaddik. It is actually something that is, that is, that is asked 
of all of us as as the life that we live with our struggles, with the an animal soul and God the soul um, uh, fighting, but we must use that uh, that contemplative meditation um, to to give us the tools to serve Hashem with inner passionate love and awe. So let's and we're going to do this uh, meditation together um, 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 to, in today's class, uh, and we'll practice some of the some of the skills of changing ourselves on the inside. Uh, through contemplative meditation. We explained in the, in the course, contemplative meditation means that you use, um, you basically, you're using your, your mind um, to, a, 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 a mind to contemplate. Contemplative meditation, it basically means to go, to, to work with your mind to develop an idea to try to get to the depth of an idea using really every, every brain cell you have to dwell on something, to understand it to its core. Just simple meditation, right? Is most meditation is means, it means using your mind, right? By the definition of meditation means to use your mind. You close your eyes, you're breathing, and you think about something. But the, the contemplative is 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 is, is actually um, challenging your status quo. It's just meditation. I can meditate and close my eyes and meditate. You know what a beautiful day it is. What a beautiful blessings I have in my life. Um, I can meditate about uh, about serenity, and that will bring me to uh, some some good feeling I have, which is which is fine. Tanya and Torah would ask, ask for much, much stronger meditation, meaning it's, it asks what we call avoda. Avoda means you got you to gotta work. Avoda in Hebrew means to labor. You know, what it's, you know, you got to make, you got to make it happen. But, but don't get afraid because you were born with a brain. God gave you a brain. And we all know that we're only using what do they say? We only use 5% of our brain powers. So, you know, that's, it's interesting that in, in Judaism, you know, the foundation of Yiddishkeit is to study Torah. Um, you know, people who don't, uh, are not familiar so much with the, uh, with the yeshiva or, or, or Torah haters um, system, um, they think that we go to yeshiva to become rabbis. We don't go to yeshiva to become rabbis. <laughs> we don't go to yeshiva to become rabbis. We go to yeshiva to learn Torah, study Torah, to learn how to, to learn how to learn, to learn how to learn God's Torah, to learn how to live life to its, to its depth and meaning, which that means you're also going to learn a lot of things that have nothing to do with becoming a rabbi. Becoming a rabbi is is in, in order to become a rabbi, you also have to go to Shiva, but that's not that's not the goal, because learning Torah is a requirement for every single Jew. It's a mitzvah. Mitzvah means it's not optional. It is a mitzvah. We learned in chapter one that every free moment you have, you have an obligation to study Torah, because only through study Torah you can come to the contemplative meditation of how to live a life that connects you to Hashem. So you can ask me, really? How is it going to study the Talmud about the ox boring a, a dog? That's, how's that going to bring me to closer to Hashem? But that's, that, that's for another conversation. There is, that, there is this underlining uh, concept. We are lucky that we're learning, uh, we're learning literally Kabbalah and Tanya, which takes the depth of Torah and focuses very much on the meditative part. But all these teachings is in order for us to, count, to, to have inner transformation in order to connect to Hashem. We're learning the, 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 the foundation of what Yiddishkeit is all about. Now I can understand that when I put up a mezuzah, what is the meditation? What's the contemplative meditation behind a mezuzah? It has to be on the right side. Why does it have to be on the right side of the door? Our right represents chesed, kindness. My home should be a home of kindness. Why is the shin has to be on the outside of the mezuzah? Because the letter shin represents Hashem's name of protection, shmirah. So all of a sudden now my life becomes 
a contemplative uh, idea of, 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 of understanding what I'm doing. So now my, my awe and love for Hashem intensifies. So let's take, uh, let's do this little thing. Uh, so a little, little um, um, they have it here in, in, the, in the book. If you don't have it, it doesn't matter. Uh, look, uh, learning activity. Let's take 30 seconds to try to think of something right now that will generate positive feelings, whether of being happy, calm, or love. All right, 30 seconds to think something right now that will generate a positive feeling, whether being happy, calm, or love. All right. So anybody want to share what, what, what is it, what makes, what, what type of feeling, what did you think of a certain, that, that, that generates a feeling of happiness? Anybody? Did it work for, did, does it work for anybody? Do you think for 30 seconds about something that makes you more happy or calm or loved? Yes or no? <laughs> anybody yeah. here? Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Huh? Well, for I, I guess I'll jump in. Um, for me, it's always got to be an internal. Like when I, when Bella and I first had some conversation. For me, if I can focus on the things that I have that are good instead of like what it isn't, um, and it does take some contemplation. It does take some mental discipline to say. Sounds like that she always comments on things and corrects her. Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. But those who are on, um, those who are not who are talking behind, please mute yourself. All right, go ahead. So, um, for me, I, if I can really focus on, let's say, like Bella, our conversation that you know, I wake up and I'm healthy and. You know, my children are safe and um, we've got air conditioning, food in the refrigerator. I mean, I, that does make me happy because the absence of those things would make me unhappy, if that makes any sense. It's right. the contrast of good and bad, having, not having, the glass half full, half empty, cliche, I suppose. But that... Those things make me happy because I can certainly focus on what isn't right, but that'll so, make. So, me <laughs> so, uh, so, thank you. So, 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 if, so, if you if it makes you feel happy, you thought about something that you have in your life, and that makes you feel happy, right? right. So, so it's it's it was, this is a pretty re it's it's relatively easy, right, to change change your behavior if you are not happy. A minute earlier, and you're thinking about your blessings in life, that makes you happy now, makes you feeling happy, right? So relatively easy to change um, um, as a behavior because the ch the change is was in behavior, not in the emotion, not in the eternal feelings, correct? Well, the the it's like you were saying, it's the intellect controls the emotions. I always compare thunder and lightning. So our brain is like the lightning, it goes faster, and then you know how close the storm is by the thunder that follows. So I was thinking the thunder is the emotion that follows the lightning of the brain. So Correct. if you direct your car in the right course, it'll go in a straight line. If you let it do whatever it wants to do, you're gonna crash. Right. So 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 basically the the um you want something in your life um, you want to be happy and you know how to get to 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 being happy because you can you can think about what brings you happiness in life and that makes you feel happy the question the question really we we, we want to get to is i i know what i know what i want right i know what i want i want to be happy i want to be safe i want to feel calm i want to feel loved um and i know how to get there many times and know what makes me feel happy, what makes me love. The question is, 
can I change what I want? Can I change Sometimes how not. I feel? Oh. You change how you so, feel, but you don't necessarily get what you want. And it's hard to control the fate okay. where you go, oh, if I only had this, then I'd be happy. But you can't necessarily make those things happen. So either you change your frame of mind because you can't change fate, or you're doomed yeah. to be uh, an object of your emotions. Correct. And then the, the, um, the tail wags the dog. Right. So I'd, so, I'd offer, if I could uh, jump in here, yeah. I'd sure. offer um, the notion of gratitude. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's likely for people that lack gratitude for what they have, for the blessings they have for each day, for the food on the table, the people that love them, the love of God, uh, the love we receive from God, the love we receive uh, all around us. If you don't appreciate that, and are grateful, aren't grateful, you're not likely to be a happy person. That's right. So um, anyway, I throw that out as a lens through which, another lens through which to look at, uh, particularly as we age, being happy. Okay. Absolutely. Does that, ring, does that ring true for anyone that gratitude is foundational? If you think you want more, you want the more beautiful wife, you want the bigger bank account, you want the more famous this, you want to live in New York with a, a terrace with a bigger view of Central Park, you want to have a bigger place in the cats because we used to live in Woodstock, New York, by the way, near where you are. If you are um, unresolved about being grateful, I don't think you're going to get very much happiness. I think I look at it like it's an algebraic equation. It's an algebraic equation. Correct. And it also harkens back to one of the commandments, thou shalt not covet. If you go around your life whining and puling about what you don't have, and by extension, coveting what other people have, you're up, you know what creek without a paddle. I agree. Thank you. I I want to I, I, I want to move on because the 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 intention of uh, the, the the class um, is this is obviously a, a super important uh, uh, topic you know gratitude and and if you don't have gratitude you you're lacking everything in life basically the the, the key to to true inner happiness is gratitude how we begin our day with mother ani um, exactly. the, 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 the the and. And that goes with that is that goes without saying that's something that has to be emphasized every single moment, every single day. I want to take the gratitude in the sense and ask the ask and challenge to because grat, gratitude is in itself is is takes takes contemplation. It's not so simple to say, yeah, I'm just I just feel grateful. It takes takes work. That's right. it's, it takes work to to. You know, some a lot of people think that they are grateful and somebody else is not grateful, right? Um, everybody else is not grateful, but yeah, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, and uh, and we take and then and then in essence, we are really not. For many things, we're not grateful, and the proof is in the pudding. Because why you why are you so why are you so why 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 are you so uh, greedy and 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 why you have such an ego? Why are you so so nervous? If you have gratitude, you should be humble. Um, so obviously it's more a word, but we have to, we actually have to work on that. So let's take that, let's take that a little bit uh, further. Can I use, can I, where, I'm, where I'm trying to get to in this class is, is can I develop a new emotion? Can I develop a new emotion, um, specifically the emotion of love and awe in, in, my, in my relationship to Hashem? Um, it's going to be that's going to be our, our question because because right now right now 
uh, when we talk about Av Hashem, I don't even know exactly what that means. I have never really thought about it too much, right? I'm grateful, makes me, you know, I love Hashem, but I'm grateful. He gives me all the blessings. I'm grateful for what I have. But what is the, what is the depth of actually uh, challenging the way I actually do feel about Hashem? Can I intensify it? Can I create some type of deep love and awe? And how do we do that? In general, when we talk about awe and love, the difference between those are those are those and Tanya, those are the primary categories of emotion, love and awe. Everything else is an offshoot of the emotions. In general, what's the difference between when we say um, love and awe? So we talk about the emotion of love. Emotion of love causes us to be drawn to something. It makes us go get closer to something. The emotions of awe, or fear, respect, is the emotion that causes us to draw us back. All other emotions are, are, are offshoots of these two of these two emotions. Either it is coming closer to something or drawing back from something. Um, so if we change the, the change the things for which we love and are, then they actually change our insight. And this is really where we're getting to um, in in, the, in terms of love of awe and love Hashem. If we can change the way we have fear or awe, respect for Hashem, then everything, all the other emotions follow along. All the other other emotions. Talk about, for example, um, an example, uh, the emotions of um, kindness, right? If I develop a love for Hashem, then that will intensify my emotions of being kind to others and kind to Hashem. Or if I develop an emotion of standing uh, in awe of Hashem every single moment, that will make me less angry. That will make me less um, uh, fearful. So as, as you see that if you're focusing on the two foundational emotions of awe and, and love, that will that will help us uh, um, really change our inner feeling. That's the for, that's the fine, the word yira in Hebrew, which is we I say awe. Um, first, um, as as opposed to ava love. Um, and there's actually a debate: which one do I need to work on first? Which one comes first? Does awe come first, or does love come first? Um, so in Tanya and in Talmud, it says that the first emotion that you have to work on is actually awe, is zero. Awe must come first. Once you have awe in, in, in the work on awe, then love can follow um, in a much real, in a real way. Not just saying, yeah, I love, I love, I love, but what does that love, what does love even mean? So let's talk about awe for a moment. Um, So yesterday I went on a hike with the kids um, to this beautiful, um, uh, like a mountain and, and, and river, and was like a, and 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 I didn't see, I didn't expect to see because it looked like it was in the forest, it was a hike, and then we got to the end. All of a sudden, you see this beautiful, huge mountainous, and and the water coming down, and. And, it's, and, I, and what's the feeling standing there when you see uh, an amazing uh, scene? Oh. That's, that's, oh, exactly, that's all, right? What, what, what's the, that's the, the wow factor, wow. You feel captivated by, by the scene. What does it make you feel when you're like, wow, standing in the Grand Canyon and you're like, wow, what does it make you feel? Mesmerized. Mesmerized? Mm -hmm. Appreciate you, Exactly, you 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 feel completely overwhelmed and captivated by the by the experience. Or if you read a uh, listen to a musical or or a certain book, right? It leaves you like speechless. That is what we refer to awe of Hashem. That is the feeling that I want to develop. That I want to create to stand in the awe of the presence of Hashem, not what we call fear of God. That's why I don't like to use the word fear of God. 
fear of God is a is a term that is terrifies, right? That's a, that's a, that's association with 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 a, with punishment and, and purgatory, right? That's a, that's something that is emphasized in the other religions. Fear of God that what you're going to if you misbehave you're going to be burning in hell and right you're doomed and you never be um, never be redeemed etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Tanya makes it very clear that Torah does not does not does not emphasize that's not a a an emotion that we should um, uh, focus on um, because in essence when we say fear of God and fear of the punishment it is very little has has to do very little with my relationship to God it's more it's more self-centered I'm afraid to get uh, punished. So I'm going to make sure I behave. That has little or nothing to do with a relationship to God. Tanya challenged us to, to, to utilize contemplation, meditation, to contemplate about the greatness of Hashem. And there, here comes gratitude, for example, right? But deep gratitude. Imagine every morning you could wake up and meditate for five minutes being grateful and think and, and go through deeply how amazing uh, your life is how amazing the blessings you have, and 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 come to come to understand the greatness of Hashem to your capacity, that you come to say, "Wow, I am so blessed standing in the I am speechless standing in, in the presence of God." That is a very uh, key foundation um, where we say that awe of Hashem is the first building block to every mitzvah to every experience. Um, and and if we if we say if we use that approach, then awe of Hashem is not a is not an unpleasant experience. If I say fear of Hashem, right? If I think about fear. If I do this and this, I break the Shabbat. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get punished. This that's a fearful experience. So um, that's where he starts in chapter forty one. So, can can I just throw in? I don't want to throw a monkey wrench into this. It seems to me Judaism has, because of right and wrong, a fear mm -hmm. of God, starting from Avram onward. Um, we are motivated not only by, well, let me say as a joke, um, Moses comes down with the Ten Commandments and he says, good news is I got him down to ten. Bad news is that adultery stays in. We do things so we, we do things like not stealing, not lying, adultery. We do things out of fear of the negative consequences as well as the positive. Overall, I believe if you live a life Jewishly, the promise is and probably will be fulfilled that you have a good life. But inherent in that is also if you do bad things, God is not going to be happy about that. This, uh, is, it, this it, is a judgmental religion. This is the opposite of Woodstock 1968, 69, where you do whatever you want. You don't do whatever you want because it doesn't work out. And God knows that. That's why we study Torah. So, because... so, so, so we are reframing that. That's kind of exactly. Thank you for bringing that. Exactly. I just my throw point. that out. That concept. Right. right. But, but, but. So, so like this. It, it, it's a, it's, it's the, the. Are there consequences for our actions? Of course, there are. Right. We believe there's consequences for action. One of the fundamental beliefs. Um, however, my in a relationship. The, we are challenged not to live a life because there's a consequence to my action, right? Rather to live a life that you are appreciate, appreciate the relationship and the presence that you are in, that you have. So it's, it's an example of parents, right? Um, you, can, you can parent all the time by giving consequences, punishment. And for a child, that's how you. That's how we. That's how you have to. That's how you have to parent 
uh, majority of time, right? Because the child is not developed yet to appreciate, right? That the relationship standing in the presence of a parent. And unfortunately, that's how, that's how our system has worked and it continues into adulthood. So as long as I don't get caught, right? I can get away with it, right? Idolatry, as long as I'll try to, everything to do, as long as I don't get caught, if I get caught, I know there's gonna be majorly consequences in my relationship. That's a horrible relationship from the get-go. Uh, right. yeah. in, yeah. in my mind, it, I don't want to confuse the notion of how I parent and stuff like that with what my relationship, with what is the God of the Torah. The God of the Torah is a God with rules, with judgment. And we can debate whether the Jews believe in a heaven or a hell and you know consequences in the afterlife. Mm -hmm, but it mm -hmm. seems to me clear we don't live as Jews in, with the notion that anything goes if we like it. Because there's a power that's higher than us that says, nope, it doesn't work that way. And fear of God and awe of God have their place. They have their place socially, societally, and personally, and probably in the big picture. <laughs> you know what I mean? The again, the 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 idea that there is that there is um, that that type of fear of God is it's correct that it's 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 a, there's a there's 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 law and order there's 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 there's, there's uh, judgment and and you know that's what Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is all about correct. However, and this is really the the thing where we failed big time that we have we have settled for a relationship that is solely based. On a on a on 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 a on a reward and punishment uh, relationship. I'm not suggesting that. I, I'm I'm not. I know. I know. But I'm saying it doesn't. Does it help? It helps because because that's like that's like law enforcement, right? But but what we want, what we're trying to do, and what we failed big time in Judaism, is to emphasize that that we are dealing with a loving God. Hashem is a loving God. Hashem is all present. Hashem is all good. If you just settle with a with a that 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 you know, okay, there's a big cop on top of me all the time, and I just can't get, and and that's how I. It's going to, it's going to give me the framework to live a life of a system. Then we have failed building a true relationship. I don't that's want to. Be, that, that, I don't want to be that, represented. That I. No, no, I, I understand. Be, and and, and also that, that, that's where in Torah when you when you read the stories. And we we too too many times we just we just read it from that lens. We read it that Abraham feared God, so he did this and this. And Moshe feared God, and he did this and this, and he didn't do it. They got punished, right? So it's a it was a cop. Was no, a cop I don't the, read the Torah that way. Not, I nothing read. about you. I understand. Okay, I'm just, okay. I'm, I, I want to emphasize this. I I we ourselves fall into this trap, and we need to teach more about the foundation. And the foundation is 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 elaborate right here, so don't and they, and but it, and again it takes it takes work. That's why we have to be always present, understanding the presence of Hashem. You know, one of the reasons we always say Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, everything say Baruch Hashem, bless Hashem. Why? Because it helps it, it helps us put us in the framework that we always in the in the in the presence of Hashem. That everything is that we take, like I said, gratitude, but on, on a constant basis. Let's 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 move on to the actual to a contemplation of all. This is in, in chapter 41, uh, and let's do that today. Um, let's use this text one, if you have it, if not, I'll read it very slow. Um, and and um, which, is, which, is the, which is the attempt to uh, construct in our, in, a reading in our minds when we read, the, especially the chapter 41 is used in yeshiva as a text to read as a contemplative meditation. So if you have it, great, so on page one, 22 in the PDF. If you don't, if it's you have the book, chapter 41. Um, 452, I think, in the book. Okay, I don't have the book in front of me, oh, but uh, okay. that's possible. So I'm going to read very slowly, and then uh, maybe next week we'll we'll have it on the screen. Have a better better system with the computer. All right, text one. 
One must, however, constantly bear in mind what is the beginning of the service of God as well as its, at its core and root. So here's the emphasis, the beginning, right? The beginning of the service, the beginning of service. What is the beginning? What is the foundation? To so continue, one must first arouse the innate awe, which lies hidden in the heart of every Jew, not to rebel against the supreme king of kings, the holy one, blessed be he. This means that he should at least contemplate in his mind, right? Meaning, contemplate with your mind. Even if you cannot move your heart, you should contemplate with your mind. But sometimes you can, I say, I can't generate a feeling yet, but I can think about something. So he's challenging us to think, to contemplate with our mind. The greatness of the blessed infinite, right? So infinite is a big word. Infinite, right? Infinite is, is what? What's infinite? Forever and Anything ever, that, ever, and ever. That, can we can we even imagine infinite? Can you can you, can, you can, can you imagine infinite? Yes or no? No. <laughs> Some people yeah. the in, 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 infinite is either the infinity they're driving or the infinity uh, pool, right? <laughs> End, yes. Endless. That's that, that's that's not yeah. infinite. Um, somebody somebody wants to use the word to, to just to just to contemplate an in, infinity. But think about the room you're sitting right now. Right? Look around the room he's sitting around. How much space? Uh, how much? How much space do you take up relatively to this room? Right? How much? What's the percentage of space that you're taking up this room? All right. Five uh, percent. The three percent. And now, and now, go and you know they have on Google Earth where they uh, where they zoom out. And now go and zoom out to your building you're in. In relation you to the building, how, how much smaller you are. And then keep zooming out to the city that you are, right? Now you, can, cannot, you cannot find yourself on that little city. At least if you look in Google Zoom of your city, what are you in relation to that? Well, spec. And now zoom out to the country that you are, right? And then, and, 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 and then, and then the planet Earth, and then the solar system, and then the galaxy, right? You, at this point, you cannot even have a mental picture of where you are in that spectrum. Right. Is that is that already is that already infinity? It's still not infinity, right? Still, for, some, still. for for some, it could be depression. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Rita. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna swing it the other I'm gonna swing the other way around, right? <laughs> yes. So so so, so, th so this is still still this is still you are still finite and and it's hard to even grasp your place in the galaxy, right? And Hashem is the creator of all. And 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 now God is beyond beyond that beyond any sense of 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 that vast universe that we're talking about right so that's what he says talk about the greatness of the blessed infinite the god is way 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 beyond bigger than even what you just imagine how crazy the galaxy towards you is how much the the distance in a sense is between you and god it's that's that, that's definition of an in, in, infinite yet or the, or the middle of a meditation so i'm i'm, I'm actually schmoozing within the meditation, so, so, so stay with me. Continue, and his kingship, which extends to all worlds. I'm in the, I'm, the I'm, I'm reading the text in the book, in the PDF. I think in the book has a little bit more translation, so I'm sorry. I can't even find where you are on the PDF. Okay, so just let's, 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 let's oh, on PDF, uh, 122. Page 122? Yeah, page one, um, no, sorry, so sorry. Yeah, I don't have the PDF, the actual book on me. Uh, lesson six, text one. I don't know what page it is. Must be from the first. Lesson from, six. Okay, you, yeah. sent, you sent lesson five. Okay. I think uh, lesson five and six combined. I'm so sorry. Okay. If anybody know what page it is, uh, I don't have the computer from. All right, so, so, so moving on. So I'll start again from the beginning of the text. You have it, Leona? I think it's page 131. 
in, in the in the student page on the bottom it says in my book 122. Really? Is this on have a heart? Lesson six, have a heart? Lesson six, yeah. And so it it uh, hold on. That's four. I... It's it's the first text after have a heart. Starts starts one must first arouse. Um, one must have a constant bear in mind. Well, text one was not what you were reading. That's what got. Um, so, re, can you start like one? One must, know? however, constantly bear in mind. That's that's a text start. All right. Let, for now, let's let me read it and just listen. Let's listen in. I'll read it again from the beginning. One must, however, constantly bear in mind what is the beginning of the service of God as well as its core and root. Must, one must first arouse the inner uh, which lies hidden in the heart of every Jew not to rebel against the supreme king of kings, the holy one, blessed be he. This means that he should at least contemplate in his mind the greatness of the blessed infinite and his kingship, which extends to all worlds, both higher and lower. So, so in other words, God, God is infinitely greater than anything that we can even imagine. Page Yet, 123. <laughs> huh? Page 123. Correct. 123. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. yet he, he leaves aside the, the, the creatures of higher worlds and the creatures of the lower worlds, which is like angels, and uniquely bestows his kingship upon his people Israel in general. Right. So with this vast stage set, higher worlds, lower world, galaxy, and everything, right? God sets the stage. He selects who? The Jews. He selects Abraham and his descendant as the focal point of his relationship. Right? He's assigning the Jews to be the light unto the nation. And upon him in particular, Hashem decides that I want to have the relationship with the Jewish people. I want to give them the Torah, and upon him particular, which basically means you. And God wants a relationship with every single person. Here we in the framework of the Jewish people, but by extension, every human being. God chose us that he wants a relationship. As we know, for each person is ob obliged to say, famous line in Talmud, for my sake was the world created. Right? The Talmud asked why, um, um, why, 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 did, why does the person have to say, for my sake, the world has been created? Really? For my sake, the world was created? It, 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 the Talmud it underlines the great responsibility carried by every, each individual. So every individual has to, has to understand that God created you, not just by mistake, because he wants you to accomplish a certain unique mission and I want that relationship. So God has chosen us with that responsibility and for and, and he, and continue the text, and he for his part accepts his kingship upon himself, that he be king over him. And so recognizing this basically, um, now recognizing that God has chosen me with a certain mission. So, um, and God wants, this special relationship and God wants to serve him and to, to do his will in all kinds of work of service. Um, so that great privilege and behold, God himself stands over him. Yet at the same time, the whole world is full with his glory and he scrutinizes him and searches his inner parts and his heart to see if he's serving him as fitting. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a very personal relationship um, because God, is, God has the ability to do anything. In other words, I recognize, A, that God has chosen me, and B, I recognize I can't hide from God. It goes together, right? I, can, I can't say, um, oh, God chose me and I can hide from God. No, God has chosen me with a mission, and, and, and I cannot hide from his presence. Because he's everywhere and he will he says, scrutinize him, searches in the parts of his heart. Therefore, 
he must serve in his presence with awe like one standing before the king. So, in, in conclusion, basically, we, 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 um, we reflect upon this concept that God has chosen to have, God who is so, so infinite has chosen to have a relationship with, with me and that God is present in, in, in present all the time. That means he's constantly watching me, constantly in my presence. So that creates a sense of awe, standing, wow, I'm, I'm in the presence of Hashem and he, he's talking to me. He wants me. Um, Can I throw in an idea real quick? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I yeah, like sure. the idea that awe is also like humility. He must serve in his presence with humility, like one standing before the king. Judaism puts a high regard on humility. Moshe is the leader with great humility. Right. And, 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 and humility comes from a sense of standing in the presence of something great of ourselves. Exactly. And that's, and, and that's, and that's where, where he goes in the... Um, in the next, in the next uh, text, text two actually, he brings in, I'm gonna continue reading text two, page 126. One's awe of God should be at least like one's awe in the presence of an ordinary mortal who is watching him. He would refrain from doing anything unseemingly in the other's eyes. Even uh, this is term, uh, termed awe, as Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai said to his disciples, may it be God's will that the awe of heaven be upon you like the awe of a human being. For you know that when a person commits a sin, he says to himself, may no one see me. Such awe, however, is termed as only lower level awe and fear of sin. We talked earlier. That's the, that's the basic level of, of awe standing, kind of like God is watching, or you could say God is watching over me, so I don't want to get into trouble. Okay, that's, that's the basic. And he and the great rabbi Yochanan Mazakai telling his students, what is he telling his students? You should always have the awe of heaven like the awe of a human being. One, sec one, one second. Um, so, you know. You know, they, 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 they say, uh, you come to our place, right? And they say that you're on camera, right? <laughs> when you're on camera, you, you, you're automatically, you're behaving. <laughs> so, so, because we have an inner, inner, inner uh, sense of, uh, of awe or an uh, inner sense of, uh, of, of, of fear that when we are being watched, we, we automatically got to behave, right? We don't, right? I want, and you, 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 when you come home from a long day, and you are, uh, you do in your house things that you don't do outside, right? It's fine, right? You put your feet up, you, you, you open the beer bottle, you drink the beer bottle. But if you're in the presence of somebody else, right, automatically you put on better behavior. So basically, Rabbi Yochum Zach is telling his disciples, start with that. Start thinking that may your, fear, may your awe of God be like the awe of, of a fellow human being. That's, a, that's an entry level. But in text three, he goes further. In text three, he says, and this is the natural hidden awe referred to earlier. However, in order that it should be translated into action in the sense of fear of sin, so that one will turn away from evil in action, word and thoughts, one needs to bring it to light from the hidden depth of the understanding of the heart and to place it within the realm of actual conscious thought that is in the brain. This means immersing his thoughts in, in it for a lengthy period of time until it X will emerge sorry, for the potential into the actual, that he will turn away from evil and do good in thought, speech, and action because of God who looks and sees, hears, listens, perceives all his deeds and searches his inner parts and, and, and heart. As the rabbi's best memory said, reflect upon three things and you will not come to sin. Ethics of a father. Number one, know what is above you, an eye that sees, an eye that hears. And although he has no bodily likeness. On the contrary, that is the very reason that everything is revealed and known to him, in, to him infinitely more than, for example, through physical um, media of sight and hearing. 
so that that uh, that that contemplation right um is uh is basically that that's the base that's the beginning idea that hashem is always watching us but now in text four and this is the last text for today yep. now each individual jew however he may be however he may be when he ponders upon this for a considerable time each day my god is truly omnipresent in the high and low world the actual heaven and earth is truly filled with his glory that he looks and seeks and searches his inner parts in his heart and all of his actions and words and counts his very every step then all will be implanted in his heart throughout the day later when he will get when he when he will again contemplate this even with a superficial reflection any time or moment he will turn away from evil and do good in thought speech and action so not to rebel god forbid in the sight of his glory where the whole world is filled in other words Yes, this will awe is this is 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 emotion that I want to create that will remember the awe is to for me to move back, to distance myself. Distance myself from doing something that is inappropriate. But not just because I'm afraid to get punished. That's fear. But as we say in Yiddish, it's pastichnish. It's not befitting. Standing in the presence. If you stand in the presence of a king, right? Think about for a moment. You will you won't uh, sneeze into your into into your into your uh, sneeze loudly. Uh, you will or cough loudly. You automatically on best behavior. Not because you're afraid the king is going to smack you, because you're standing in the presence of something great. You just behave, right? You'll make sure you 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 dress properly. Your 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 behavior, your mannerism, everything is. It's because, called respect. Out of respect, out of the awe. Oh. So, so basically, so basically, this is continue the last line here. Last few lines. This is in accord with the statement of Rabbi Yochanan Zakkai to his disciples quoted above. This then is the meaning of the verse: God demands of you only to have awe of the Lord, you God, to walk in all His ways. But this is the awe that leads to the fulfillment of God's commandments, turning away from evil and doing good. Um, so that's that. That's the. Um, that's the um, the idea um, that is again. It's not the intent of a mitzvah that the, the intent of the mitzvah should be with awe and passion and love. We're talking the foundation of everything is to to always contemplate and to have that sense that we are standing in the presence of God, the greatness of God. And by standing in the presence of God, they're not only just standing. He is. He has a filter. He knows everything that's going on inside of me. He knows every thought I have. Not that I'm now afraid to do something, but that gives me such a sense of wow. I am standing in the king's palace every single moment of my life, and standing in, in that in that presence. Uh, if I'm tempted to do something that is that is, I'm being tempted. You have a moment of weakness for a moment. Just try to contemplate what your life is all about. Contemplate that this is the that the standing there of Hashem, out of out of the greatness, I I I I not even thinking twice to do something. Not because I'm gonna get hit, because I'm standing in 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 out of the I'm standing in the in such proximity of Hashem, I I cannot even think something to do something that's that's the opposite. That is the the that takes that takes work, that takes work, that takes contemplative meditation. But he says also then if you do this every day uh, for a few minutes, then the rest of your day you can easily fall back on that. If you don't, it's like exercising your 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 brain muscles. Um, this uh, this this is uh, really the the power of awe, as it's explained here in Tanya. All right, any last minute questions? I have a question. One more com one more comment, which really brings us to the next book of Tanya. The, this to, the contemplation also not only just those are just words, but we have to learn and study um, the greatness of Hashem. What is Hashem? Understanding that's the Shema. It's really the Shema meditation, but really study day in day out. That's so vast, um, not just in words, but really understand uh, to help and, and to help. This is really what what um, uh, if somebody wants to underline what. What did Tanya bring? What does Tanya teach 
what is Hasidism, the philosophy of Hasidism is, is to, is, is to utilize contemplative meditation to get us closer to Hashem in a real relationship with him. Yes, what's the question? Because we didn't talk about love. Yeah. The question is about the contemplation we're talking today. Is that refers to Hid Bani Nut? Yeah. Right? Yep. It's born, yeah. And if, if I want to compare to Hid Bani Nut, what would you say? What's the difference? I think the uh, I think uh, his brother Dud will be more more in line of of of, of love. But that that uh, the Rabbi Nachman uh, school of thoughts, right? It, it it's both, and in, in, in the and Tanya also deals with his his brother Dud as well, and it, it's it it in a sense, and also Nachman is not only his brother Dud, it's also a lot of his brother Nud as well. But maybe Rabbi Nachman emphasizes, or the the core is more in in the the, uh, um, the 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 love and the joy of Hashem, which also is also in the in the in the Chabad Chassidus as well. And the question really is what 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 are your where are you holding in your in your service of Hashem? Similar, uh, the, are you, do you to have his body do? Those who don't know, his body do basically means that you are. You, you try to um, um, mo remove yourself from the noise of the inner noise and the noise of, of the universe and and to try to focus, laser focus on the light, on the light of Hashem. Sponanus is more of a struggle, is more of a, a, a debate that you have with yourself. You want to debate the animal soul. The animal soul will pop up and say, don't be so excited. And you say, well, why not? And and, and, and let me explain it to you and back and forth. So his born and nut is, 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 is contemplative meditation takes a lot of work because in order to understand something deeply, you have to study something. Study means that you need to use um, I don't know the word is due diligence, but you have to really do, really get into um, to to understand something in depth. You have to be able to to um, to always challenge the information. Thank you. That's that's Talmud. That's Talmud, right? Challenge the information, yeah. and 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 come back and come back. Challenge meaning never take the information just as is. Challenges in order you can delve deeper into. All right, um, I will, uh, God willing, do one more class on Monday, hopefully to finish the last part of love, um, and uh, we'll go from there. I believe, uh, after after, so the this Monday morning we'll we'll continue. There might be a little break after that, but. Uh, um, Rabbi, great! Just... Thank you. A wonderful yeah. lesson. Thank you, Rabbi. You're welcome. Yes, thank Enjoy you it. very much. It was great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have, Have a good, good week. Thank you. Bye-bye.